Um, item C, the Charleston County Pavement Re uh, Management Revamp. Sure. So now I'm going to turn it over to our pavement manager, Mackenzie Kelly. Um, she, she did invite a lot of elected officials to this. We always get asked the question, why aren't you resurfacing this road, that road? I think this is going to give a good understanding and how our program's working. She also invited a lot of other counties. I see uh, we have uh, Beaufort County and we have um, Ber Berkeley County here. I don't know if we have any other counties here. But we're also recording this meeting so we can get this information out and share our payment management system with the other counties. So with that, I'll turn it over to McKenzie. Thanks. So good morning, everyone. Um, again, I'm Mackenzie Kelly, Payment Manager for Charleston County Public Works. A um, little bit of background on our payment management program, in case you don't know. Um, Charleston County maintains a payment management program that includes all municipal, county, and state secondary roads. So that's essentially every single paved public road in Charleston County, with the exception of your major interstates, like 26, or highways, like 17. So that's about 1,800 centerline miles of road that we maintain. Um, each year, we analyze the system and prioritize annual resurfacing contracts based, um, I'm sorry, based on the pavement condition and amount of traffic on each route. Over the last three years, we've worked with, um, we've been grateful to work with the Cursor Group um, to do a full pavement management program assessment and system software upgrade utilizing agile assets to implement these recommendations. This included several hours of in-depth conversation on our current program operations, support through pavement management, survey data collections with automated collection vehicles, and guidance to improve our overall business processes and practices. Joining us here today, we're very excited to have Eric Perrin from the Kirshner Group, um, who helped lead this team on, a journey, on this journey. Before joining Kirshner Group, Eric worked for Agile Assets based in Austin, Texas, and Raleigh, North Carolina, in the capacity of Senior Principal Consultant and Project Manager. During this time, he was assigned to the North Carolina office in Raleigh and managed various implementations of Agile Asset Payment Management and Maintenance uh, Management Software for 14 transportation agencies across the United States and Canada, including some of the largest pavement systems in the country. Eric has his Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering from the University of Delaware and Master's of Science in Civil Engineering from the University of Texas, Austin. Eric, thank you again for all your hard work and helping us through this implementation. I'll turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. Morning, morning. Um, it's a real pleasure for, for me to be here. Let me uh, turn on some slides. And here we go. There we go. Um, it, it's a real pleasure for me to come and talk to you about the pavement management program that we've put into place with uh, Mackenzie and her team, uh, at the folks in, in Charleston County. Uh, a little bit about us. We are currently working with Charleston County. We're also working with Spartanburg County in South Carolina. Um, uh, do, we've done some work with York County um, uh, here and also counties up in, in uh, North Carolina and also in, in Florida and, and other parts of the, the country. Um, my background, uh, I have done a lot of work in my career with state DOTs, so I've uh, implemented pavement management for North Carolina DOT, Texas DOT, Caltrans, uh, and that, and so I've been doing um, uh, pavement management for uh, uh, quite a while. I'm happy to discuss uh, what we're talking about in terms of, of pavement management and how the system comes together. And uh, one thing I want to uh, uh, point out is is the words that we use here uh, is a pavement management program overview and by program we don't mean like software program we mean a comprehensive uh, pavement management approach one of those things is of course some software that we've implemented uh, for the county but it's more of a holistic approach of how to manage pavements uh, and the money you spend. As, as we all know, pavements is a significant portion of your transportation infrastructure. Uh, quite a bit of your, your assets are, are wrapped up and money is wrapped up in your pavement network. Uh, it requires a lot of work and, and coordination every year uh, going forward. And so when we talk about a pavement management program, it's not just software, but more of a, a holistic approach to, to everything in there. Um, so to start out, um, let's just talk very quickly about what is pavement management and, and why is it necessary. Uh, the, the idea behind a, a pavement management uh, approach to things is that you have a significant event in investment in your pavements out there and, and 
applying a uh, objective and, and reasonable approach to pavement management will in, in the end give you a better pavement network to serve the public and also spend your funds more wisely. Uh, in fact, one of the ways that we like to talk about it in terms of, of thinking about a, an asset management or a pavement management approach is that there are many, many, many different ways to spend your money poorly. <laughs> but only a few good ways to spend your money. And what we want to put into place is the kind of analysis and reporting, data collection, and all of those different things that you bring into pavement management uh, to, to spend your money in the best way and, and look at how your funds are being done and get the best uh, thing out there. Um, this is a picture of a pavement uh, structure in various states of repair uh, out there. And one of the things that we do uh, is to look at how to measure what you're getting from your pavement ne network. And very often that, that is captured in a, uh, an index, what we call a pavement condition index. And that pavement condition index, uh, when you have a high pavement condition index number, something over 90, you have a, a pavement in excellent condition. All of the layers are in good shape. There's very little distress. Uh, there's very little cracking and roughness and things like that out there. Uh, but as the pavement uh, deteriorates over time, the pavement condition index starts to get lower and lower, and, and the structure starts to deteriorate. You start to get cracking. You maybe get rubbing. And, um, you could even uh, come across like safety issues and so forth. Uh, and so as the, the condition deteriorates, uh, you'll notice that the cracking starts to get into the lower level of, levels of the pavement. And as that happens, uh, it becomes more and more expensive to fix that, that pavement. You can no longer just do something on the surface. As, there's, as the deterioration gets into the lower la layers, uh, it costs more and more to do it. Um, classic thing to talk about is a car analogy. You know, um, if, you, if you change the oil very often and you do the things you need to do, it's easier to keep the car in good, good condition. But if you, let the, if you don't change your oil and you let the engine start to get bad you know, as things go on, it becomes more and more expensive to fix the problems that you have. It's classic, classic kind of analogy going on here. So, um, so when we think about pavement management, this graph on the right uh, is kind of a classic conceptual picture of how things happen. 75% uh, of the life of a, of a pavement uh, is in that upper portion of uh, condition. In other words, the pavement might be in fair, good, or possibly excellent condition. But as it gets over that, that edge and starts to deteriorate more, uh, you know, the, the, the end of life in there, the, the last 10, 12 percent, your, your pavement quality goes down and it becomes six to ten times more expensive to fix those roads. And so the idea is uh, to spend your money in such a way that you can bring your poor roads from the poor condition into a good condition, but once they're in good condition, the idea is to keep those good conditions, uh, keep them up to date. In other words, keep, good, keep your good roads good, cost you less over time. So this is just a classic uh, way of thinking about uh, this thing. So what we want to do with a pavement management program is use objective ways to measure the condition of those roads and then predict how those things are going to deteriorate over time so you can program your money uh, to best spend it and keep your network in the best condition. And that's what we're looking for overall. Um, so the project that, that we did with the, with the team really had three components to it. Uh, the first one was going out and doing data collection on, on the network using uh, an automated van. And if you can see the van there, there's all kinds of all kinds of good stuff on the front. You have cameras, uh, downward facing cameras. You have lasers that measure rubbing uh, and cracking on the road out there. Um, there's also roughness measurement devices on those things. So it's measuring how, how much actual roughness you feel uh, out there. Um, classic way to capture uh, how well a pavement is, is serving the public is to look at what kind of roughness it, it's giving out there and what you want to look at. Uh, so that's one component. So, so there was data collection that went out and did that. Uh, we helped uh, the county with looking at the quality of that data and making sure that it was uh, good and useful for a pavement management program. Uh, the next piece of the software uh, was to, to put a software program in place. And we used the, um, the system called Agile Assets, which is a um, uh, management software suite out there that we use for pavement management. 
It incorporates uh, optimization routines, so you can put in, well, this is how much money we have to spend, what's the best way to spend it, what projects should we do, and what kinds of things. And we'll, we'll talk a little more about that as we get further on. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we've been implementing a GIS-based uh, data reporting system that the uh, county will be making uh, available where it can show you the conditions of your, your roadways out there and also um, uh, yeah, show, show upcoming projects. You know, what is the plan? What is going to be happening with the resurfacing and rehab and other types of work that's going to be done on the network uh, as public information that you can make available out there? So those three components uh, of the project we, we brought together uh, to, to, to encompass what we would call a pavement management program. So we're looking at measuring the condition of the roads. We're using software to help objectively choose projects and budget the money. And then finally reporting that information out across the public uh, out there. Um, <clears throat> OK, so let's talk a little bit about pavement management and what we do. To, so when I say that we're picking projects and optimizing the use of funds, what kinds of things are we talking about? How do we do that? Um, and so the objective of a pavement management system, when you, when you go and run those things, what you're trying to do is to maximize what we would call network benefit, uh, subject to cost constraints. So you might say, um, we have uh, this CTC budget. So you have funds from the CTC you can use. You have your TST budget. You have funds uh, going through the, the TST. Uh, so these are limits on how much money you can spend. What we want to do is take that money and through analysis say, well, given that money, this is the best condition we can get on the network. And not only condition, we want to use the word benefit. And so in the next couple of slides here, I'll describe what we mean by benefit and why we, we take that approach. But if we look at, at the pavement uh, uh, here, you have a, a road in very poor condition. You can see the cracking, uh, what, what us in the industry would call alligator cracking. So you have the uh, kind of cross cross hatch cracking. That really means a pavement in very poor structural condition. It's going to deteriorate quickly. Um, when you apply a treatment to that road, um, you go out and you, you do some resurfacing, whatever it might be, you might improve that pavement condition index by 70 points, and you might extend the life of that particular road by 20 years. And so when we think about benefit, when we think about what you have purchased for the money you have spent, we like to think of things in two components. The first component is how good is the condition? And the second component is how long does that good condition last? And so we want to look at not just improving the condition, but also making that condition last over time. And if you multiply those two things together, that's what we refer to as benefit. And so if you think about in a classic economic sense, uh, benefit cost analysis, this is the benefit we talk about in pavements, and you can also compare that against the cost and the dollars you're spending uh, to fix those pavements. Um, from a schematic standpoint, when we talk about a pavement management system, we'd like to project what's going to happen to the pavements over time. So we have a pavement condition that starts at 100, so pavement condition index is 100, brand new road. And over time, it will deteriorate according to, say, a graph that looks a bit like this. And what, would, what happens is, as that road deteriorates, it, it moves down that graph, and it gets to a certain position on, that, on there. And at that point, we want to interject. We want to come in and do a treatment. We're going to spend some money on that road, and we're going to improve its condition. Uh, at, and so at that point, we, we apply a treatment. The road improves, so the index goes back up to a particular level. Uh, and then at that point, the road will continue to deteriorate into the future. So if we were to do a treatment that improves by 70 points and then lasts 20 years, what happens is we're interested in looking at that area there, that shaded area. And that's what we call the benefit of spending your money. So when we set up a work program, if we run an analysis and we say over the next 10 years, these are the projects that we want to do, what we, what we do with the software is we capture what is that area that we're getting. That's what you're purchasing with your money. I'm getting better condition roads that last a longer time. That's what I'm paying for uh, in terms of, of a pavement program. And what we want to do, using analytics in the software, 
is we want to maximize the total amount of that area that you're purchasing for your funds and apply it across the network in an objective fashion. And that's, that's what we're approaching. So a pavement management program includes all of those components needed uh, to achieve that goal. Data collection, in other words, you need to measure what you have. Uh, analytics, which is the, the idea of analyzing this benefit, those new, new things that are out there. Uh, coming up with a work plan that maximizes that area over time. Uh, and then finally reporting. So we put together maps, uh, reports. Uh, McKenzie can also uh, come in, use the software to generate, you know, what is our projected condition over time? What is our current condition? You know, all of these different things uh, come into play. And that's what we mean by a pavement management program uh, going out there. Okay, so a, f a few more uh, components on that. Um, one of the things that we like to do and we like to capture in this type of software is that we want to be looking at a treatment toolbox. You want to come into a pavement management program with a variety of things you can do to the pavements. And what you want to do is, of course, select the right kind of treatment and you want to apply it to the right locations and you want to apply them at the right time. It doesn't do you any good to do a seal coat on a road that needs to be reconstructed. Uh, that's just wasting your money. What you want to do is pick the right things that are out there. Uh, as an example, um, the types of treatments that are mostly done here, we have rejuvenators, which are done shortly after initial uh, rehabs or, or reconstructions of roads. That tends to soften up the asphalt, if you will, and, and make the, the life go. We have microsurfacing, which is a, uh, a kind of a preservation type treatment. Uh, asphalt overlays, which are uh, rehabilitation, so you take a road that's in a little more marginal condition and bring it back up. Uh, and then finally, things like full depth reclamation, which is very much more like a reconstruction, bring the roads up. The key is, is we, we take those different kinds of treatments, we model how they impact the road and how long they last, uh, and we apply them uh, out there. So right treatment, right place, and right time is a very important part of that. Um, this is a, a graph showing uh, what you know, a, a hypothetical opt optimized treatment might look like on a particular road. Uh, the initial black line uh, shown there is the original performance curve, what we would expect from a newly constructed road. Um, right after construction, you come in early to do preservation to keep, that's the two red lines there, to keep the road in good condition. In other words, that's very much like changing the oil in your car. You, you do it often, you do it early, you do it when you need to do that, and it will extend the life of that, that road, just like it extends the life of your car. Uh, eventually, um, you can no longer do preservation, and you get further down the curve, and you, you hit a place where you're going to need some more uh, intervention in a pavement out there. So you would come in and do a rehabilitation, followed by more preservation, another rehabilitation, and more preservation. The key here is to model those right treatments at the right time and put that into the analytics. And that will help you to program how you spend your money and to get the most uh, life and condition out of the money uh, that you spend. OK? All right. Um, in, in general, these are the types of things that go into a pavement management system, a pavement management program, you have things like inventory. So um, the county has a record of all the different roads, when they were built, how big they are, how many lanes, you know, all of that different type of stuff. We have condition data that was collected by those vans. Um, we have work plan, uh, which is a uh, current uh, estimated list of projects that are going to be getting done over the next few years. Um, construction history is a record of what kinds of work have been done out there. Um, in general, when we look at all of these components in a, in a system, they really break down into two pieces. The, the top half is what we would call data management. That is managing all the data that goes into the software, collecting the data in the field, writing down what construction work you do, you know, all of these different things. The bottom half of of this uh, list is what we would call policy management. That is, what kinds of treatments does uh, gets done in Charleston County? How do you know when to do 
each different kind of treatment. How do I know when to do this rehab or that overlay or this seal coat or this rejuvenator? Um, performance models is how do we know how things deteriorate? Uh, and then finally, running analysis and, and getting reporting out. So in, in general, you're looking at data and policy as two parts of the, two major parts of the, the system out there. Um, in a nutshell, we talk about uh, engineering inputs into software. So one of the things that we do as, a as part of our services is we sit down with the engineers from the agency and we capture what kinds of things get done. Um, as I talked about earlier, there's different kinds of treatments. There's rejuvenators and asphalt overlays and microsurfacing and all that. So we capture all that stuff into the software and, uh, in and put that into place. Um, we also go about doing what we call decision trees. And decision trees are specific engineering rules that we code into the software um, that tells us when to do different types of work. So one of those things might be, um, and if I blow that up a little bit, this is one of those rules in there. And, and it's saying, well, if your crack index, so if we're looking at the amount of cracking on a pavement, gets below a 30, um, depending on where we are in the county, we might do either a remove and replace type treatment or we might do a, a full depth reclamation type treatment. These are all engineering rules that we capture in the software and that way we are, we are evaluating our work programs and our projected things into the future in an objective and documented way, uh, which can be, can be used to generate these work programs. Um, we have performance models in the software, and that is how do we expect the pavements to deteriorate over time? So when do we expect it to hit certain threshold levels based on experience in, in the county? So one of the things to say about performance models is when we did the project, we sit down and we capture opinion from the agency. Uh, our staff is also um, uh, very experienced with, with pavement, and we're able to um, gather when we think these deteriorations are going to happen. But as you collect more and more data, so as you go out and collect more and more data on the network, you'll be able to use that data to fine tune these models. So you'll be able to look at the actual experience of your roads deteriorating, how long it takes, and what you can expect uh, to bring that into play. And then lastly, um, analysis and reporting is now we've, we've put all this together. I always like to think we, we have a big cauldron of information there, boil, boil, toil, and trouble. You know, we put it all together, and we're able to use that to generate uh, what can we expect for the money that we spend. This is the money we're going to put into the network. This is what we can expect in terms of long-term condition and how the network will uh, deteriorate. So, so those are all critical portions of the pavement management program. Um, so uh, in terms of Charleston County, so this is just some, just some statistics on things that are uh, in the network based on our latest data collection um, in 2021. So we had a network average PCI of a 70.5. So overall, the whole network is, is coming in at a, at a 70 on that scale of 0 to 100. Um, there's 1,800 centerline miles, uh, 4,100 lane miles, which is a significant network. Um, uh, it's a, it's a good-sized network, pa uh, 24 million square yards of pavement area uh, out there. Um, the table on the right is a list of what we would call backlog costs. And what are backlog costs? Backlog costs are kind of unmet needs. If you look at your pavement network and you had all the money in the world, how much money would you need to spend to bring everything up to perfect condition? That's what a backlog cost is. Um, now, uh, we, have, we list two of them there, the TST costs and CTC costs, because there is uh, differences in, in the unit costs and, and what you have to pay for, for different kinds of work. Now, uh, um, one thing I want to uh, point out is that when we say $330 million in backlog, what that means is unmet needs. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need $330 million <laughs> to fix your network. In other words, your, your backlog will never be zero um, unless you had a perfect network, and that wouldn't be cost effective. But what it does mean is that uh, it's, it's a, a number you can look at in trending terms. In other words, if your backlog is growing, you're kind of getting behind the eight ball. 
if your backlog is shrinking, your condition should be improving. And so it's like another way of looking at what is the state of the network? Our, our, our average PCI, is it staying the same? Is it going up? Is it going down? Our backlog, is it going up? Is it going down? These are different types of, of measurements and, and um, objective things you can look at in terms of how your pavement network is evolving over time. Um, if you look at the pie chart here, uh, you'll see that about 50% of the network is good, very good, or excellent, and about 50% of the network is you know, marginal or worse. Um, and the key, one of the keys that you can do in, in pavement management is look at how the network is distributed in terms of condition and try to manage that uh, in, in terms of keeping maybe keeping some of your poor miles uh, down as, as much as you can and keep those good miles up. In other words, um, uh, we, like, we like to say it's easier to keep your good mile good than it is to fix a poor mile. So once you bring something into good, you want to keep it up there. And that's what the software uh, uh, tries to do. Okay, and um, getting my computer is there. We go. Um, this is an example of some of the kinds of analysis that we can do uh, in the software. Uh, and so, as time goes on, you can begin to ask more questions of the software. You know, uh, so this is an example of two different scenarios we ran for nine years. Um, how much would it take to maintain an average PCI of about seventy? Uh, and according to the the analysis that we've, this is preliminary, of course, uh, it was about twenty five million a year to maintain a level cruising altitude, if you will. Um, the current funding uh, is on or about $10.5 million a year. And what you can see is that projected PCI is going to deteriorate uh, over time. So maintaining current, about 70 is about $25 million. Uh, and uh, at current funding, you can expect the network to, to deteriorate. Um, this is a preliminary uh, analysis. But this kind of, these kinds of questions are the things that the Pavement Management Program can help you to answer. Where do we expect to be, given certain types of spending? Where, what kinds of output do we expect to get from there? Um, uh, to follow that example, this is, an, this is an example of what the trend in backlog costs would be under those two same scenarios. The blue one is, if we maintain the current condition, what's going to happen to backlog? And you can see it, it, it actually decreases for a while, and then it begins to come back a little bit. It's very, very... Uh, uh, normal to see backlog kind of have some waves in it. Uh, but you can see that the trend in backlog costs is generally downward by keeping your condition uh, in place. So in that, and that's what we're looking for. Um, however, under your current funding, you can expect your backlog costs to increase. And one of the things you notice at the right side of that graph is that as you get further out, if you get behind, you start to get more behind. And things start to, to tick up. Uh, into the future. And this is the kind of analysis that we can do with the payment management system, is you can ask it questions. What if I spend what if I spend this much money? What if I spend this much money in this way? What if I do these, these types of things? So that what if question is now um, some power that, that you can bring to bear on asking how things are going to go. Um, one, one thing to point out is that uh, if in this case, if you um, went from 10.5 up to 25 under the current analysis, um, your backlog would, would reduce from 345 million to 206 million, which is actually $9 million uh, more than the money you spent in, in terms of that. So these are the kinds of economic analyses and things you can do with the software. And so we're real, real happy to, to be working with the team and, and bringing that together. I think you guys have a very strong tool here that you can use uh, and, and, and bring to bear on your, on your you know, important conditions or important decisions that you have to make. Uh, and so we have a lot of, of capability. Um, at that, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Anything else you'd like to discuss? Uh, uh, from anyone, if, if there are any. Thank you, Mr. Is it Perone? Is that how you say it? Perone, yes. Yeah. So make sure I say that right. Uh, do we have any questions for Mr. Perone? I do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, different yeah. systems that you've seen over the years, whether state uh, DOTs or whatever, mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I saw a 13% poor, very poor in your, in your pie chart. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to other um, areas or every, other agencies uh, that you've had experience with? Well, um, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to, hesitant to talk about exact percentages, but there, there is a variety of different levels out there based on, on what kinds of funding is available. But very often in some of the analyses that I've run, a 10% poor kind of cap uh, is something that, that comes up with a lot of agencies. They'll say, well, what does it cost to make sure we don't get above 10% poor? You know, or very poor in this case it might be. Um, so if you're a little above that, you might spend a little extra money doing heavier treatments to drive that number down. Uh, and, and like I said, once you get something, once you fix something, get it into that good category, you want to make sure that you're allocating enough money to keep those roads in the good category. Um, there's definitely a wide variety of agencies out there. Some agencies have more money than others. Um, Florida, for example, is notorious. <laughs> Their state agency has a lot of money to spend on resurfacing um, in that side. Uh, on the other hand, um, New Mexico um, does not have a lot of money out there, and so they're struggling to meet their different um, things. Um, in, in all cases, it's nice to be able to capture what's going to happen, um, at, at least to give a realistic picture of what you can expect given a certain budget, given a certain way that you want to spend it. Um, one of the things you can do with a pavement management program like this is to um, test your priorities. Like, if we really want to drive down our poor mileage, what impact does that have on our good mileage, <laughs> right? Because if we're spending a lot of money on the poor, we're not spending a lot of money uh, on those cheaper but widespread treatments you can do. And you can kind of, you know, trade off that type of stuff. Mr. Harris, do you have a question? Thank you. Yes. Those, uh, those nice looking vans, is that part of your company? Or is that another it is not. It's a, it's a company that we've worked with a lot. Okay. That is uh, Australian Road Research Board is, is that particular one that, that we worked with here. Oh, interesting. Uh, but there's a there's a number of different vendors out that do that type of thing. So your primary function here with the county is to is to collect all the data for the for the, for the program. Uh, well, our primary function was to number one implement the software. We did quality control on the data, so that the other company collected the data and gave it to us. Um, what we what we helped with is quality control that data and make sure it was in. Um, collected correctly, it, it was fell within, you know, uh, measurement boundaries and, and that type of thing. Uh, but moreover, what we wanted to do is, is help the agency implement the whole program. Not just software, not just data, but the whole thing. Think about what, what treatments go into the software, think about uh, how to budget the money, how to run the scenarios, and all of that. Okay. So, so we, we kind of, we're consulting on the whole program, if you will. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Charlie, you have a question also? Yeah, the, um, this is going to sound, it was just going to sound stupid when I say this, but um, we've had the problem, and I'll get to the question, we've had a problem just here in the last several in the week, uh, recycling. Um, uh, and the big excuse is uh, that uh, the trucks run out of diesel. Um, there's a whole street that I live in, as well as other streets. Now, my wife brought my attention on the, on the next door, and I'll get to my question in a second. And uh, this morning, she informed me while I was drinking my coffee that coffee that she buys uh, went from $19 a box to $25 a box. So that was kind of like a 20% increase. And I was thinking as you, and I gave you a presentation, you know, I've been through a lot of these things over the years, a 10. Oh, thank uh, you. So it's very good. Uh, the only thing I wrote down early on of the two things that I just brought up is I didn't see in there, and of course we've been told that, you know, next year is going to be better. <laughs> um, I thought after 2020, <laughs> things would <laughs> be straightened out. But we have inflation, mm -hmm. and that's what I wrote down as cost increase. And of course, we just you know approved with the the fifty million, which I thought was a good idea to leave some wiggle room there because we've got we we've, we've got some concerns. I think, or I do, about you know how much 
can we do? And obviously, we need to do a lot. I'd print your, your, that vehicle. Uh, I can give you all kinds of places where the roads are alligating and what have you. And yes. Everybody in this room can probably, <laughs> we can tell, have a survey of different roads. But to be able to fix those roads and get the products to fix them, in part of your, res I mean, in your presentation, I didn't see, did you take into effect what if we go to 20 to 30 percent inflation, we can't get diesel or we can't whatever's caused this first time I've ever seen recycling a program in the county mm -hmm. uh, not be able to pick up stuff uh, and, we're, um, and goodness knows I pray for the people in Kentucky and the other states who were hit so hard. It seemed like this is, you know, uh, I almost feel bad about even bringing it up, but we, we do have to be concerned about the cost, I think. Yes. I mean, we've seen different municipalities that are raising raising the taxes for services, so on and so forth, and it's always, as a former elected official, and several of us up here have been under under that situation to make decisions. So in that presentation, is there anything that takes inflation in consideration? Uh, so what happens is, in the software, in that Agile Assets software that we use to run these simulations, uh, inflation is one of the components that you can add to it. So you can say, what if our inflation is this versus what if it is this? What if what if it is that? And you can compare what the impact would be on the pavement condition, your average life, the number of poor miles, you know, all of these different things. In other words, inflation is an input to those simulations. So you, you, you could say, well, what if, it, what if we experience 2% inflation? What if we experience 6% inflation? What, you know, what will happen? Um, of course, what will happen is um, if your budgets aren't, aren't adjusting for inflation, the number of miles that you can treat is going to go down, right? Because the cost went up, the number of actual work you can get on the road is going to go down. So you're going to see an impact on that on your projected condition out in the future. So in other words, it's, it's, a, it's an input to those simulations. You can, you can try uh, on a kind of what if basis, you know, what if we experience this inflation versus that inflation. So in inflation is one of the components of the unit costs that we put into the software. Thank we'll you. add to um, for the prices shown in this presentation. We did look at all the trends of all our past CTC TST resurfacing, and we looked at the trends to set those prices in the system. So how they're moving yeah. in the system. So a combination with if we added the input. Right. And we're currently um, going to be working with the agency to um, um, put into place, you know, an annual review of those costs that you do as part of a standard operating procedure. You know, it, so you, you want to come back and revisit those unit costs and what you expect to happen in the future. Uh, inflation would be one of those things that you have to consider in that. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs>